they say university makes students here students make university so with the slogan of think big i himanshu kaushik your host of the day would like to welcome you all in today's webinar on let's culture living cells in vitro and i hope that before i move on i mean actually we move on to the session i hope that you all are doing good safe sound and healthy and wherever you're taking this session from so before we move on and learn lot more about the culture um, and how actually we can culture cells in vitro we have our expert here who uh, will be helping us uh, to get the knowledge of it and also a little demonstration at the end so for this please welcome uh, ms jina gupta she is an assistant professor um, from school of biosciences and engineering a lovely professional university she is a magnetic personality who's having a more than 10 years of experience as a postdoctoral fellow and an educator of course and she's done her phd from national institute of pharmaceutical education and research that is naipur mohali punjab and uh, she's done a uh, phd on role of insulin induced epigenetic changes in altering gene expression in 3t3 cells under hyperglycemic condition um also not only just the education she has won several awards and has done seminars different seminars conferences in national and international institutions of the view and she uh, at the end will be guiding us through the process of cell culture and also uh, as i already mentioned we're going to have a little demonstration of the same so keep yours in free and focused for the presentation and before i request uh, jina ma'am to take over the screen I want all the students to all the participants to know that please, if you have any any question, any query, write in the chat box or the Q and A box so that we can take up uh, in the end of the session. And with this, Jina Ma'am, I welcome you in the session, and I I request you to please take over the screen and looking forward for an amazing session. Uh, thank you, Himanshi Ma'am, for the nice introduction. uh so today i'll uh, i'll be speaking about the cell culture basically uh this is a technology a very high throughput technology uh with which you can uh, do a lot of experiments you can test a lot of drugs uh in uh, living cells uh, without uh, uh, without doing any damage to the animals without killing animals or without uh, consuming much uh, equipments and much uh, reagents or much uh, funds basically okay uh so the topic is like uh, let's culture living cells in vitro okay so in this uh, like we know that all the human beings all uh, not only human beings all the living organisms they are made up of cells okay cells are basically the units of life uh, like we can uh, right from uh, the unicellular organisms to the multicellular organisms so all the uh, organisms they are made up of living cells okay with this technology which we are going to discuss today which is the cell culture technology we will uh, we can culture the these living cells the cells which exist in the living organisms we can culture them under artificial conditions providing them the required nutrition the required environment so that they they will culture they will uh, grow divide and perform their life activities okay while performing all those things while performing their activities while performing uh, while doing growth and uh, while undergoing even undergoing differentiation into different cell types we can uh, alter these cells we can provide these cells with different uh, types of environments like for example uh, uh just a simple example if you want to check the efficacy of any drug okay like for example any medicine uh, i can say uh, for example metformin for diabetes if you want to see what is the effect of metformin on the living cells so we don't need to do experiments on animals we can just do experiments on these living cells on the living cells by using the uh, cell culture technology okay so n number of drugs can be uh, tested in this way without uh, doing any harm to the animals okay so this also reduces the effort so we can test uh, like for example if we want to test 10 drugs so we can test first in cell culture uh, these 10 drugs and we will see which one is effective for uh, uh, like a particular disease and then we can test on animals for validation okay so so this technique is very high throughput technique so uh, i'll start my presentation so what is cell culture so we will discuss right from the basics 
uh, how the cell culture, what is cell culture and how it is done. And I will also give you the demonstration in the laboratory. We are having a cell culture laboratory in LPU. So I'll give you the demonstration how it is done in the laboratory. So first we'll discuss what is cell culture. So uh, the definition of cell culture is when you are growing the cells in the in vitro conditions. In vitro means outside the living organisms. We are culturing it in, in, in the laboratory condition that is called as the in vitro condition. So when we are growing the cells in the in vitro con uh, conditions which are isolated, these cells are isolated from the multicellular organisms like humans and plants. Okay. These cells will continue to divide. With, uh, this is the normal uh, process in the cells. They divide, they grow, they divide, okay, uh, multiply into two. Then again, these two cells grow and divide and multiply into four. Okay, so their number is constantly increasing. But every cell, every cell, uh, when we are talking about the living organisms, every cell is in an environment where it is in the contact with other cells. For example, if I talk about tissues or organs as such, like liver or kidney organs. So each cell, our kidneys or our liver, our, our organs, they are made up of multiple types of the cells. There are, uh, for example, uh, there are uh, fibroblasts. Okay, so uh, there are uh, different keratinocytes, there are different cells, even uh, there are different types of white blood cells. So the cell is in, in an environment where it is in contact with different cells. So that is also a process which controls the cell division. The cells, when they divide, uh, they divide to a level where they come in contact with the other cells. When they come in contact, they have a process that when they divide, they move apart from each other. Okay, but but when they come in contact with each cell, when they come in contact with each cell, they undergo a process which is called as inhibition. They uh, their growth inhibited, so they will not grow further. So that is the difference between the normal cells and the cancerous cells. Normal cells they grow and they undergo inhibition when they come in contact with other cells. It means uh, they have uh, filled the enough space. But cancerous cells, uh, they are modified, they are they are genetically modified or uh, they undergo uh, some uh, transformations in which they uh, lose their control over the cell growth. They, they are not inhibited when they come in contact with uh, uh, other cells. So that is called as uncontrolled growth. So grow and form a tumor or a metastatic cancer. Okay. What are the uses of the cell culture? There are different uses of the cell culture. Nowadays, cell culture is used in varied fields. They are used in the production of vaccines. Vaccines are the need nowadays. Uh, doing different uh, research in stem cells uh, or recombinant DNA technology and production of antibiotics. These are just some uses. They are also used in drug testing and uh, they are also used in disease mimicking or understanding the molecular mechanisms of the disease. So they are having the varied, cell culture is having the varied uses. So what types of cells are used for cell culture? Basically, mammalian cells, if you are talking about the animal cell culture, there is also plant tissue culture, which is separate from this, in which the plant cells are cultured on, in the in vitro conditions, in the laboratory conditions. Uh, animal cell culture particularly accounts for the mammalian cells, uh, cells from mammals, uh, so that are commonly used. Uh, they grow. Uh, these cells, mammalian cells, they grow so slower, like as compared uh, if you compare the mammalian cells with the unicellular organisms like bacteria or other organisms, bacteria divides every 20 uh, minutes. Okay, it uh, divides in uh, uh, so the, it, its population doubles every 20 minutes. You can say, but for mammalian cells, it take. Uh, 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 like long time to divide into two. So they are basically slower in growth. And since uh, like, for example, uh, plant cells, they are having the protective membrane. Bacteria also has a uh, peptidoglycan layer. Plant cells as uh, cell wall. Mammalian cells are very fragile. They are just having the cell membrane and sometimes some mucus layer over it. Okay. So they uh, and even uh, for mammalian cells, since they are having the complex internal structure, their nutritional requirement requirement is also complex. When we compare this with the bacterial cells, bacterial cells are simple to culture, simple nutrient requirement, uh, fast growth rate. So earlier, uh, basically, bacteria is used for the genetically uh, genetic engineering, for harboring, uh, for making the proteins, uh, therapeutic proteins or other therapeutic uh, uh, biotech products. Okay, but uh, nowadays, uh, with the realization, it was realized that the products, the the uh, the biopharmaceuticals or uh, the products which are produced in the bacterial cells, they are uh, they do not have the required uh, three dimension 
structure uh, tertiary structure or you can say they don't have the required glycosylation pattern so they basically lose their activity those proteins are not functional which are produced in bacteria so that is why uh, mammalian cell culture comes into uh, effect and mammalian cell cultures uh, helps in producing more and more effective proteins so bacterial cell like e coli is commonly used for the growth simple uh, petri plates uh, simple media or either the solid uh, media containing the agar or liquid cultures are used uh, uh, for culturing the bacteria for the bacterial cells also uh, sterilized conditions are required uh, so that any other foreign uh, microbe or any other foreign particle cannot enter the media and only our desired bacteria will grow optimum and start producing the protein of our interest okay so these medias are poured into the plate uh, media is inoculated with the bacterial good and they are growth in the 37 degrees celsius incubator a simple incubators which uh, just maintain uh, the temperature a uh, constant temperature of 37 degrees celsius so this is uh, how bacteria cells uh, um, many of you may be uh, uh, doing bacterial cultures in the laboratory so bacterial cell uh, bacterial cells are very easy to grow okay but when we talk about the animal cell culture their their nutritional requirement is complex their growth rate is low uh, they require more more uh, uh, not only 37 degrees celsius they are require many other constant factors for their growth so which we will discuss in the coming lectures so what is exactly cell culture so till now what we have discussed what is exactly cell culture so in short we can say that cells basically uh, which are previously growing in the humans or animals they are now grow they are they are now modified to grow in the plastic or glass vessels in the in vitro body when these cells are in the body then they, this is called as in vivo like for example uh, we are using animals for uh, showing some drug effect or uh, doing some activity evaluating some activity then it is called as in vivo experiments but when we are growing cells in the laboratory condition in the plastic vessels that is called as the in vitro that is why we are saying growing living cells in in vitro conditions uh then uh, these uh, culture has to be done in an incubator uh, which basically maintains the body temperature we all know that it is 37 degrees celsius so we need to maintain a constant temperature of 37 degrees celsius again from for growing the animal cells and uh, we need a media a media because in our body the food we eat they provide the nutrients for the cells to grow okay but uh, since these cells are cultured under the in, uh, in vitro conditions so where do these nutrients will come from so we will uh, culture these cells we will grow these cells in a medium which will supply all the nutrients which are required for the cells to grow and divide so how uh, this uh, uh, cell culture when, when we are talking about uh, the tissue culture or cell culture in particular so whether it is an animal cell culture or a plant cell culture plant tissue culture we need to separate the tissue the tissue the required tissue is separated then from these tissues the cells are separated so we need to identify which particular type of cell we need to culture we need uh, we need proteolytic enzymes which will basically the separate uh, separate the cell in the suspension from the tissues the cell are cells are separated now they are in the suspension then these cells are cultured these cells are put in an artificial medium where they will start growing where they will uh, be provided with the ambient conditions like temperature ph uh, uh, then humidity uh, and atmospheric conditions uh, so then these cell cells start growing Uh, so at first just identifying uh, just isolating the cells from the tissues and culturing them in the cultured condition that is called as a primary cell culture where you are just culturing where you are directly culturing the tissue cells in a nutrient medium when this primary culture the cells grow they grow to an optimum level where they can come in contact with each other so we discussed that that is a phase which is called as as, as an uh, inhibition inhibitory stage where the cells will cease growing further before if we allow the cells to divide further if we uh, just you can say dilute these cells uh, so that uh, they will not come into the stage of inhibition uh, so we will uh, transfer some portion of these cells into the fresh uh, flask uh, fresh media uh, they will again grow add to the optimum so this is called the subculturing of the cells and the process and these cells are basically called as the secondary cells secondary culture and uh, when uh, we grow them to like uh, many times when we culture them many times so that is called as a cell line 
uh, okay uh, now uh, these cell lines uh, are uh, basically uh, they uh, they have a finite lifetime they generally go up to 30 divisions even if we culture them if we even if we provide them uh, with the fresh media with the all the required conditions and all uh, the things uh, and will not allow them to go into the inhibitory stage they will grow up to maximum of 30 uh, divisions because you know that every cell has a process of aging so with divisions and with uh, uh, more and more uh, culturing they will age and eventually lo lost their capacity to divide but uh, what uh, what scientists have done what they have done they have fused these prime these secondary cell lines with the, they make the hybrid of these cells with the cancerous cells so we know that cancerous cells has the power to grow indefinitely they will not undergo such inhibition okay that is why they lost uh, their capacity to uh, inhibit they, they having the full growth capacity so when we make a hybrid of this cell line so this cell line will not uh, now this cell line will not cease Uh, its growth after 30 divisions it will continue to grow even to indefinite indefinite growth so that is known as the continuous cell line okay so i hope you can differentiate between primary culture secondary culture cell line and continuous cell line so why do we need cell culture why this cell culture is needed so uh, this cell culture is basically used in the research and commercial uh, production in research uh, uh, it is used for understanding the cellular behaviors how the cells behave under different conditions you can temp uh, check uh, the effect of temperature ph uh, different chemicals different drugs okay how they are behaving in contact with the other cells in a tissue okay and even you can uh, uh, you can uh, provide them some stresses stresses like in for example uh, some drugs some chemicals or uh, uh, you can even uh, put them under uh, like uh, under low nutrient requirement uh, like for example we are basically doing diabetic research so we provide the cells with a stress of high glucose condition so high glucose condition when we provide them high glucose condition high glucose mimics uh, the state of diabetes the cells are in a media which which is uh, which is rich in glucose so that that puts a stress on the cell and the cell shows the characteristics of diabetes so this way you can provide the stress uh, to the cells and then you can add your uh, drug and see its effect whether it is able to come out of uh, that stress after uh, uh, doing this okay and also uh, doing cell culture like as i have already told when using this cell culture so that reduces the animal use so now every drug should not be tested on animal it should first test it on cell culture and only those which shows potential effect in uh, cell culture can be used in animal so that reduces the animal use and commercially cell culture is used for the production of vaccines uh, so recombinant cell lines are made in which they will harbor the gene of interest and start producing the protein in abundance which can be purified from the cell line and the best advantage is that that the protein is produced in the mammalian Uh, cells it will uh, it will have all the characteristics all uh, the uh, the proper three dimensional conformation the glycosylation pattern and uh, uh, will retain its maximum activity so it is used for the production of uh, protein different proteins like vaccines antibodies and hormones uh, so cells when we culture them under the in vitro conditions if we treat all these cells right they will they will grow at their optimum and then they will produce the required protein in the large quantities and then the scientists can manipulate this environment to oh, to so that they can produce the uh, see the required effect of other other things okay uh animals are complex there are animals are made up of many different cells they are they are each cell uh, is uh, Uh, like you can say perfect in producing different proteins uh, these proteins interact continuously so when we test anything on animals we do, we are not very sure that which uh, cell will be uh, most affected and uh, which protein is uh, the basic target of uh, this uh, particular disease or this particular condition so so that is why uh, when uh, so it is difficult to watch all those events in the in vivo condition so animals are usually harmed to observe and animals are also usually we need to kill the animal or we need to extract different organs or blood from the animal so they are usually harmed uh, if you want to see these events but uh, when we are using cell culture so less animals are harmed 
uh, so we can control all the external factors we don't know whether uh, like we can control the ph uh, we can control the temperature okay and it's very easy to uh, culture cells as compared to animals animals are tough to handle uh, so you can uh, the test can be done easily uh, you can easily manipulate the single cell type uh, easily uh, you don't need uh, like multiple uh, the cells are not in their natural uh, environment and uh, even when you are doing experiments on the cells all the cells are same okay when you are we are, we are working on animals the cells uh, the animal the cells are in different environment so our results with the results which we obtained in the cell culture are more consistent as compared to the animals because we don't know how the animals will respond but when we are culturing cells so we know what conditions we are providing the cells so our results will always be co uh, constant and it is very cheaper to maintain what we can do with the cells we can test pharmaceutical drugs we can uh, watch the mechanisms disease mechanisms okay we can observe the regenerative process how the tissue repair itself like one of our field is uh, we are we are observing the wound healing so we will see how the cells uh, repair themselves how how they are helpful in healing the wounds how they their movement is increased with the effect of certain drugs so so we can we can just also evaluate their regenerative process and we can also evaluate their developmental process how they develop and we can even differentiate these cells uh, in the in culture uh, condition so we can see the differentiation process also so what are the equipment which are required for the mammalian cells so we need a co2 incubator why a co2 incubator is needed a co2 incubator is an equipment which maintains 5% co2 uh, conditions we know uh, we are living in an atmosphere where the concentration of co2 is 5% so since the cells are uh, mammalian cells they also need this condition when we are doing the bacterial cells bacterial cells when they are, we are putting them in incubators incubators maintain 37 degrees celsius our mammalian cells also need 37 degrees celsius temperature for the optimum growth but when we are growing them in the incubator inside the incubator the temperature is not optimum for the mammalian cells because uh, uh, if uh, if we are not putting them in the co2 incubator or a no, uh, instead of that we are putting them in a normal incubator in the normal incubator the atmospheric conditions are not maintained so for culturing cells we need a special instrument we need a special uh, uh, equipment we need a special co2 incubator which maintains 5% co2 concentration which maintains at 37 degrees celsius and 95% uh, humidity which basically these conditions mimics the condition uh, the environment of the cells when they are inside the uh, mammals uh, since this cell culture is very prone to contamination uh, because uh, the same uh, 37 degrees Celsius temperature, the same nutrient media, which uh, the media which is rich in nutrients, is also liked by the bacteria and other microorganisms. Okay, so uh, we we don't want bacteria or other microorganisms to grow instead of our cells. So we need to maintain a sterile environment. We need to culture all those cells, our cells, in a sterile condition where no interfering uh, microorganisms microorganisms or other uh, uh, chemical uh, or other things uh, should be introduced so we need to maintain a sterile environment for these we are using a laminar uh, flow hood i guess uh, most of you know the principle of laminar flow hood how it maintain the sterile environment it is having a hipaa filter basically there is a laminar flow of the air a unidirectional flow of the air and the air, air is all sterile because of because it is filtered through the hipaa filters then uh, how we can access the growth of the cells whether we are, we are saying that we are growing the cells we are they are increasing in number how we can assess the growth of the cells or how we can assess that whether they are actually growing in numbers so with that for that we need an instrument which is called as a hemocytometer this is the same uh, uh, instrument which is used in uh, the laboratories the biochemical laboratories to test uh, to check the number of white blood cells you uh, you may be have going or you may be going for a tlc dlc total leukocyte count differential leukocyte count or uh, red blood cell uh, count okay so the same equipment is also used in the cell culture to see the um, uh, the to see the number of the cells if we want we can evaluate the num uh, the cell number using the hemocytometer so it is used for cell counting then another thing we need an inverted microscope inverted microscope with which we can observe the cells we can uh, see the cells i will show you inverted microscope all those things uh, we are having in the laboratory 
so cell culture process so basically uh, the cell culture uh, is uh, i've already discussed it is very prone to contamination so for uh, to avoid contamination uh, we need to use uh, we need to uh, uh, follow many precautions uh, we need to uh, enter the cell culture without wearing any shoes we need to put on the lab coat Uh, then we need to wash our hands with a uh, disinfectant. So the commonly used disinfectant in the cell culture laboratory is 70% ethanol. Okay, and we need to sterilize. We need uh, all the containers should be sterilized. So we generally autoclave all the containers. If we they are not autoclave, we wash them with 70% ethanol. Uh, and all the bottles uh, needs to be sterilized. The surfaces of all the bottles. So we need to clean them with 70% ethanol. We need to. clean our surface with 70% ethanol and uh, uh, we need to do all the work under laminar like in the inside the laminar air flow okay another thing uh, we need to change the media of our cells frequently because when the cells grow there are many chances that they uh, why the media change is required because when the cells grow they start excreting uh, some waste material this waste start accumulating inside the media and this uh, waste is also a, a source of carbon and nitrogen to the growing microbes uh, if there is any by chance microbe enter in in this Uh, so uh, we need to change this me media frequently so that we can reduce the number of waste products one and we can also reduce uh, the chances to get contaminated with the microbes okay. so uh, this is an instrument the hemocytometer which is used for cell counted so such as are counted uh, so you can see there are 16 squares uh, so this 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 type of four four uh, 16 squares four blocks of 16 squares are there on hemocytometer uh, so we need to stain our cells with uh, a reagent which is called as trypan blue type trypan blue has an uh, like trypan blue is a reagent uh, which only stains the dead cells the living cells you can see here in the figure the living cells they appear as white whereas the dead cells they are they appear as blue okay so this way we can count the number of cells in each square okay and then we can uh, so this will give you an indication to the total number of cells applying the formula so for viewing cells inverted microscopes are used so that is basically used to uh, determine the cell growth and activity uh, there are basically two types of cell cultures one are called as adherent cells another one are called as suspension cells most of the non cancerous cell lines they are of adherent type they basically adhere to the surface okay uh, so they, they they don't grow in the cells in the suspension mode they generally adhere themselves to the surface of the flask and grow uh, till a point is reached where they come in contact with each other so where they reach the inhibitory stage they will not grow further after this inhibitory stage whereas on the other hand suspension cells uh, Uh, they are basically suspended in the liquid they are not adherent they don't adhere to the bottom of the flask they are basically suspended in the medium they grow uh, uh, with with their growth the turbidity of the media increases the media will become more and more turbid uh, so that is an indication that the cells are growing okay uh, these type of suspension cells are basically uh, mostly cancerous cell types uh, cancerous cell lines are uh, of the suspension uh, suspension type so this is the process uh, the the inhibitory process uh, which i was talking about this is called as contact inhibition so what happens uh, when two cells collide with each other okay uh, when they are grow they uh, uh, they collide with each other they move apart there are free spaces they move apart okay so uh, think a situation when these free spaces when the cell number increases to such a level when these free spaces uh, are uh, no free spaces are there that time the cell cells come in contact with each other so this is a protective mechanism uh, so that the uh, the resources will not be wasted okay and uh, we know like in uh, human beings we don't want to like uh, that our skin is flowing out or something like this so uh, for that is, there there is a mechanism of inhibition of the growth of the cell so when they come in contact with each other their uh, their locomotory process is paralyzed and they are in the process of contact inhibition
so how the cell lines are extracted for the in vitro culture so we need to first identify our tissue of interest from which cell line we want to culture okay uh, so uh, cells or uh, so from that uh, we uh, just separate the cells uh, incubate those uh, the tissue with the proteolytic enzymes okay uh, these enzymes which separate the cells from each other now the cells are uh, separated from each other from that cells we will put in the required growth medium uh, in the growth medium this cells start dividing so this is called as a primary culture uh, when they come then when they grow up to like we don't want to grow them up till 100% if we allow them to grow to 100% they will undergo contact innovation so we don't want that so we allow them to grow up to 80 70 80% at 80% of their confluency we uh, just uh, trypsinize the cell we again uh, put a proteolytic enzyme which basically removes the cell from the surface we are adherent so it removes the cells from the surface and then we put those cells into like from one flask we will make four flasks we put the cells which are uh, in one flask we put those cells in small smaller amounts in the four flask okay uh, this is called as subculturing uh, again in four flasks we are providing them the fresh growth medium to grow and divide okay and uh, the, now this this cells are called as secondary cell lines okay uh, these cell lines uh, these uh, secondary cells when they, we allow them uh, to be subculture again and again so then they will establish as a cell line okay when we uh, under when these cell lines undergo transformation for indefinite growth either by forming hybrid with the cancerous cell line or uh, by uh, certain chemicals mutagenic chemicals or by uh, genetic engineering uh, removing the gene so or uh, inserting the genes so we can uh, form the immortalized continuous cell lines cancerous cell lines uh, so cell culture has uh, many applications so, so it is an excellent model for studying the normal physiology and biochemistry of the cells uh, we can check the effect of many drugs and toxic uh, compounds in the cells we can also check uh, mutagenesis and carcinogenesis and it is also used for drug screening and development and also for the large scale uh, manufacturing of biological compounds the media which we use, generally use for cell culture is DMEM, which is Dalbaco modified Eagles medium. It contains all the essential, uh, all the necessary nutrients like glucose, some proteins, essential salts. Uh, this media is uh, generally uh, red, red or pink in color because of a pH indicator which is called as phenol red, which basically gives us an indication uh, like if uh, when. Uh, the bacteria cells grow uh, obviously they secrete some acids like lactic acid which accumulates so that it uh, so the uh, ph of the medium decreases so it it shows us that now the nutrients are depleted the cells are are grown up to their optimum uh, and we need to change the media or we need to put the cells in a fresh medium we need to subculture the cells okay uh, generally uh, when there is no growth uh, when under uh, alkaline conditions uh, uh, the media color is purple purple in color at physiological ph which is 7.2 it is pink or red in color and other media components in this media we add certain antibiotics so antibiotics like strep penicillin and streptomycin are added so this basically helps us to uh, uh, prevent the bacterial growth so the bacteria if any by chance the bacteria enters so it will not grow further okay we also add certain salts and buffers buffers to maintain the constant ph uh, salts which are required uh, by the cells to grow uh, then there are uh, the cells in the body in the uh, in the human body or other animals they also need certain growth factors from uh, for growing okay these growth factors are not present in the medium so one of the important component which we add in the culture medium is serum serum uh, is i guess uh, you all know the serum serum is uh, a part of the blood uh, when the blood undergoes a normal clotting uh, when all the cells or the clotting factors of the blood are removed uh, the liquid part of the blood is called the serum it contains all the soluble proteins which includes the growth factors and other hormones so generally uh, this serum is derived from cow horse and uh, sheep and it is added to the medium as a nutrient source for the growing cells okay and it also uh, is a source of lipids and proteins so how do we culture the cells in the laboratory i will show you uh, uh, these steps uh, okay uh, after this uh, so we basically has uh, we store the cells in uh, liquid nitrogen which is also called as cryopreservation 
okay when we want to culture the cells uh, we just thaw one vial from uh, the liquid nitrogen we just take out uh, the well uh, the cells from the liquid nitrogen and we put those cells in the required medium okay the medium which is supplemented the dmam medium which is supplemented with uh, uh, serum and uh, as well as antibiotics okay uh, when these cells are in the dmm uh, in the required medium they will get the required nutrient and uh, they will start growing all these processes are, has to be done under the aseptic technique okay uh, then uh, when they grow uh, when uh, they will first attach to the surface of the flowers okay uh, because most of the cell lines which we are handling uh, and generally use they are adherent cell lines so they uh, adhere to the surface of the flowers generally it takes 3 uh, to 4 hours uh, to adhere them to the bottom of the flowers uh then they start dividing after every 24 hours they start dividing and their number will increase when they reaches the 70 80% confluency we transfer them we uh, generally uh, 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 transfer them to the flesh class or you can even go for cryopreservation uh, you can because your cell number is now increased you can uh, even freeze them again in liquid nitrogen for your future use so how the passaging of the cells is done Uh, when the cells uh, reaches 80 to uh, 70 to 80% confluency so we need uh, we remove the media because now the nutrients in the media are all consumed up so we remove the media we wash the cells with pbs pbs is phosphate buffer cell line which is a buffered solution maintain the constant ph and uh, ionic pressure okay Uh, so it is an isotonic solution with the uh, cell cytoplasm so we wash the cells uh, with the pbs so that any waste product which is accumulating on the surface of the cells should be removed okay then we again remove the pbs then we add trypsin trypsin is an enzyme which basically uh, digest the surface the protein surface interaction so the cells are now adherent so when we uh, trypsinize the cells when we add trypsin so trypsin breaks down its interaction with the surface now the cells are not adhered anymore they will come as a suspension they will come into the suspension okay then we take that uh, that trypsin uh, containing cells into a new tube and we centrifuge to that tube cells will uh, sink to the bottom cells will form a pellet at the bottom trypsin will uh, uh, float as the supernatant so we need to remove the supernatant uh, generally in trypsin edta is also added edta is a chelating factor Uh, trypsin needs certain ions for its activity even other uh, enzymes like uh, dnases rnases they need certain ions like for example magnesium ions calcium ions for this their activity so when we are adding edta edta chelates all these ions so these ions are no more in the uh, media so the uh, they will not uh, so these enzymes digestive enzymes will not be active okay uh, now we are having the cells as a pellet in our tube now we add the fresh media in these cells okay uh, and we'll transfer this cells into a fresh flask uh, and we will again incubate this flask under the required conditions to culture these cells uh, which were now uh, in the suspension mode initially will adhere to the bottom in 3 to 4 hours and start their division process so here in this figure you can see you can compare 100% confluency with 70 to 80% confluency you can see free spaces here cryo preservation after you have achieved the required cell number uh, we need to uh, put these cells we need to again go for trypsinizing these cells put them in the freezing media now not in the fresh medium the freezing media what is the difference between the fresh media and uh, freezing media freezing media contains 10% dmso in uh, fbas okay the function of the 10% dmso dmso is a reagent which basically Uh, do not allow the cells to freeze instantly so that will not allow the crystals to form in the cells if the crystals are formed these crystals will damage the cells okay the cells will not uh, uh, so all the biomolecules or all the organelles in the cells uh, uh, they will be damaged if the crystals are formed so dm 10% dmso will help uh, us to like uh, will prevent this stage the cells will uh, freeze slowly no crystal formation will be there and they can be stored in the liquid nitrogen for like one or two years okay how the cell uh, viability is de determined uh, we have already uh, done that i i guess uh, we can move on to the demonstration so this is the basic process of cell culture uh, so i guess we can move on to the demonstration 
so this is a, a simple process we have already discussed we need to uh, just uh, uh, stain the cells with the tripen blue and uh, we just need to put the cells uh, uh, the stain cells we need to observe them on the hemocytometer we can count the number of the cells so the percentage of viable cell is equal to 1 minus number of blue cells divided by number of total cells so blue cells were our dead cells into 100 so that will give you us give us the viable cell these cells uh, there are different sizes of the tissue culture flask those cells are to be added into the tissue culture flask uh, depending upon their different densities okay uh, so once all the cell culture uh, is done we need to destroy the remaining cells once we have performed all the experiments we have uh, done all the because uh, these cells can be mutagenic they may be cancerous so we need to uh, des destroy all the cells by Uh, uh by adding bleach in this okay so we need to add enough amount of the bleach so that its color changes the pink color of the media changes to clear okay then we need to wait for 5 minutes and we need to rinse uh, we will need to rinse this uh, the media into the sink as such, uh, as such and throw the flask in the trash can so that's all uh, for the presentation uh, we'll start with the demonstration now i'll show you how we can do uh, the cell culture i'll show you the cell culture facility now Let's go. Ah, uh, Devu Jyoti, may I please request you to kindly switch on the video? And meanwhile, participants, um, Devu Jyoti, switch on the video. Basically, there will be a demonstration, live demonstration of um the cell and the cultures, of course. um and we're waiting for the questions that you can have uh, please write in the chat box and all those who are raising hands we of course will allow you to talk to our uh, expert directly at the end i can see um raised hand of ashwini rajput for sure we're going to uh, we're going to take up your query ashwini and we will allow you to talk to our expert directly and um devajyoti may i please request you to kindly switch on the video Okay. Uh, so uh, this is our cell culture facility at LTU. I guess you can see here. Okay, so we are having a uh, uh, three door system. You can see. So there is one door, one door, and three door. So the cell culture facility is like this. So uh, we are having sleepers here. Um, we will begin to focus here. Okay. Uh, so we are having sleepers here. So once you need to enter the cell culture, you need to change your sleepers. Okay. So we are entering the cell culture. We have already. Uh, we have already met the required sleeper. Uh, so this is the laminar air flow. Uh, you can see here. So we have turned on the UV light. Also, uh, UV light will basically uh, maintain the sterile environment condition inside the laminar air flow. Okay, uh, so that uh, no uh, microbe should, uh, if any, if there is any by chance the microbes enter inside uh, the laminar air flow during uh, the previous work. Uh, so that will be uh, decontaminated. Okay, so I'll show you the uh, scene. So this is the CO2 incubator which is which we are having from Thermo Scientific. It maintains a five percent CO2 uh, level. Now uh, you can see here. Uh, so we have already some flask which were already in culture. Okay, and uh, you can see here in the bottom of the CO2 there is a, a water. So that maintains the required humidity. Uh, so this this CO2 incubator maintains thirty seven degrees Celsius or constant temperature of thirty seven degrees Celsius and the five percent CO2 level and ninety five percent humidity. All the conditions which are required for the cells to grow. Okay, uh, and this is the inverted microscope uh, I was talking about. You can see here. So we are having one cell line. I can show you uh, the cells in this. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, this is the focus here. Uh, can we show the cells? So I guess students, you can have a. Uh, this is adrenaline cell line, CHO, Chinese hamster ovary cell line. So you can see the cells here. So they are adhered to the bottom of the.
I think it is visible. Uh, yes. Uh, so let's start uh, the culture. So I'll show you the subculture in line. Okay. So we need to put this glass inside uh, the CO2 incubator. So we need to wash our hands whenever we are entering the cellular uh, cell culture. And we need to put this glass inside our CO2 incubator. We, not, uh, we don't need to talk, we, we should not talk when we are opening the CO2 incubator. So let's come to the real action. So at first, I will be telling you bring the light. And I will light and will be work. I can use my watch for that too. Okay, so I first need to clean my hands with uh, 70% ethanol. So we've already sterilized that area, uh, the inside area. Okay, and uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is basically uh, we have already cleaned it uh, so you can see here uh, just focus uh, Jyoti. so this is basically DMEM media you can see uh, it contains the phenol red so the color of this media is red because of the presence of the phenol red okay so we have already added in this uh, this antibiotics these are our antibiotics uh, this is basically streptomycin and penicillin uh, so, uh, so that is already adding this to prevent any bacterial growth then we are having trypsin EDTA. So the same trypsin EDTA we were talking about. So this trypsin enzyme is used for subculturing to, uh, to remove the adherent cells from the surface of the uh, vessel. Okay, And uh, it contains EDTA. EDTA acts as a chelating agent. Uh, then we are having uh, FBS. This is FBS, fetal bovine serum, which contains all the... Uh, 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 all the uh, uh, required hormones and growth factors for the cells to grow. Okay, so we have added uh, we have added uh, ten percent FPS and one percent uh, uh, antibiotic in this media. So we have already added. You can see the froth. The froth is an indication of FPS that the FPS is already added. Okay, ten percent FPS and one percent uh, antibiotic. Okay. So this is the cell line which I'm going to culture uh, today. Uh, so this is uh, uh, th uh, this is NRK NRK uh, cell line which is uh, uh, sorry uh, it is L929 which is a skin cell line skin cell line skin fibroblast. Okay, you can see here with this is uh, we have removed it from cryopreservation and we have kept it inside the laminar airflow so that it should thaw. Okay. Uh, then we are having our vessels. We have already labeled uh, the vessel. Okay, so this is the culture flask. So we'll first uh, add the media in this culture flask. So I will again wash my hands. All the things inside the laminar flow should be sterile. So we have uh, applied a paraffin over the bottle for extra safety. So uh, when, when working in the laminar flow, one area should be dirty. You can keep it as, should not be dirty enough. Or you can keep it like you can put your, uh, all the waste product there. And one area will be completely sterile. So I'm just uh, So I'm adding 5 ml of the media, 7 ml of the media, sorry, in this class. This is T25. The surface is 25 ml.
we can use this uh, we can do this easily with the steric liquid actually our steric liquid is not charged so we have put uh, that on charging okay so we have added 7 ml of the media See here. So now we take uh, these cells. So we need to spread the media and the cells to the bottom so that they should be single cells. Yes. So we can observe them. We need to be sure that our type uh, gaps are coming. This cells, uh, since we uh, thought these cells, uh, we uh, just uh, uh, we have just taken out these cells from cryopreservation. They are in the floating mode, so you can observe the floating cells, and they will get to the bottom in three to four hours. Or then, uh, in uh, two to three days, seventy to eighty percent and then we can go for subculture. I guess you can observe the cells. They are in the suspension. You can see I, I am just rotating the class. They are in the suspension now. You can see in the suspension. So that's all for today. I guess I uh, hope you like this. So uh, 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 so we need to put this uh, flask inside the CO2 So you need to make sure that your caps are filtered cap, your flask cap or filter cap. If they are not filter cap, uh, so filter cap means they are having filter installed in them in which the air can easily go and uh, go in and out. So that the cells are exposed to CO2, 5% CO2 environment. If they're not filter cap, we need to just uh, uh, turn on the cap. We need to uh, open the cap slightly so that the air can go inside and outside. Uh, from the and that's it. That's all for today. Uh, so Yes, students, I hope you like uh, this uh, webinar on cell culture technology. Uh, if you are having any doubts, please let me know. So I'm here to answer your queries. Uh, so just let me know if you're having any doubts. Indeed, ma'am. They uh, for sure have enjoyed the session. And uh, thank you so much. Before I take up the queries, thank you so much uh, for coming in, for giving in your time to the students, for us, for all the participants. Actually, for crediting your time and explaining through the process. And yes, ma'am, we have got a question uh, from Ashwini. So it says, ma'am, this whole topic will be covered in biotechnology or microbiology. And what should what should one study you know, in order to have this particular topic to be studied in their course? 
okay basically uh, cell culture is a biotechnological te to, uh, technique it is not a microbiology technique because we are not culturing the microbes uh, in artificial conditions so that comes under microbiology here we are culturing the living animal cells in uh, culture uh, in the artificial conditions and the in vitro conditions so it is uh, definitely a topic of biotechnology and uh, 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 we are we are just keeping microbes away Topic right. of right technology, yes. And uh, and 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 Ashwini, if you want to, I um, mean, you know, or perform all these, um, let's say, um, experiments in the labs, what you can do is you simply come in here in the university, take admission, biotechnology, or uh, the course that you want to, and uh, join us here in the university, and you can find a lot of good experts, the best of the experts, like Gina, ma'am. And they will be actually helping you to excel uh, in your growth in your career. And uh, with this, I just want to ask anyone if you have any other query, um, you can just write in the chat box or Q and A box. And meanwhile, Ashwini, I just want you to know um, if you want to know the fee of the course, please log into our site that is lpu.in and go to the admissions part. And from there, you can find out the fee of the course that you want to check. Any course, you just select the course there and there are all the information regarding that particular course. I want to get into the research field while we're going to Okay, so ma'am, uh, what, what are, uh, like if somebody enrolls in biotechnology, what are that um, research fields or research opportunities available for them? Uh, in biotechnology, we are having this animal cell culture, which I just shown you, and we are having plant tissue culture also, and uh, we are having uh, PCR uh, and many, many uh, techniques which are basically important for the biotechnological research. Our labs are full equip equipped, and we are we are doing on uh, many latest projects uh, like uh, in our department. So you can come and you can really uh, do the research. Well, thank you, ma'am. And as we can see, uh, we get we are getting the responses as we got the response from Uzair. He, he just wants to say thank you. Uh, it was indeed an insightful uh, session. Uh, students must have got really informative ideas as to what they can do. Uh, okay, ma'am, uh, uh, there's one question from uh, an anonymous here. And it says, what are the um, jobs or what are the career opportunities after biotechnology course? There are a lot of uh, career opportunities. There are many uh, like uh, many uh, like biotechnological products in the market. Uh, we have we have just discussed about many of them. Like for example, teens and these vaccines, uh, antibodies, and then uh, you can even go to pharmaceutical industries uh, for drug testing and all. And you can even go go to like uh, different uh, research, doing further research as uh, like uh, post doctorates and uh, all in different uh, research fields. So. Biotechnology has uh, many career opportunities. Definitely, ma'am. And uh, I think one suggestion uh, I would want to give is when you're doing any course, um, focus on the skill you're going to learn, uh, you know, in, in the course. Um, and after that, you would get the job for sure because the skill is that matter. Skill is what matters, not the degree as such. But of course, I mean, you can come in here and get the expert advice. And with this, ma'am, I just want to th say thank you again for the session, uh, for the time. And last word of thanks uh, for the way that you've explained the whole process. Thank you so much. And also extend my thanks to Dev Jyoti, uh, who has actually has helped us to demonstrate the process. And with this, okay, uh, with this, uh, ma'am, I would want to take your permission to wrap the session, shall I? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, this session and uh, for like allowing me to conduct this session. Uh, thank you very much. So it was a great opportunity uh, to discuss this technique with the students who want to learn it. So thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. And at the end, I also want to say uh, thanks to all the attendees who joined us here. And at the end, I also want to uh, just let you know that this session will be uploaded on YouTube. What you can do is you can just go to our YouTube uh, channel and uh, I think by tomorrow it will be uploaded. So then you can watch the session again if you want to. And with this, I take your leave um, and meet you soon in the next webinar maybe. And until then, stay safe and stay healthy. And thank you so much for joining in. Thank you.